Hey guys, thanks for checking out my Intel LGA 1150 system overview. I decided to publish a few videos uh, for a few reasons. I wanted to talk about my Intel Haswell experience. I also wanted to shed some light on uh, suitable overclocking for the Intel Haswell platform. I have found a lot of users are having problems overclocking this platform. I personally consider myself an advanced user and after 13 years of overclocking experience, I also find this platform rather difficult. However, if you commit enough time to it, you will be able to get a good overclock out of any CPU, I do believe, with the proper cooling and using the proper stress testing methodology. This will be the first of a series of videos I plan on publishing. I would like to publish a video in terms of overclocking the Haswell CPU, finding ring bus stability, finding memory stability, and also enabling the Haswell C states to maximize the efficiency out of your build. So as this being the first video, I just want to talk a little bit about the system specs that I will be using to publish the rest of my videos. The motherboard is a MSI Z87 M Power Max motherboard, Intel LGA 1150. I love this board a lot. I had the M77 M Power and man, or sorry, the Z77 M Power rather, and uh, that board basically rocked my world. I loved it so much, I really wanted to adopt the 1150 platform and on what better board for me than the Z87 M Power? That was cut and dry. That was the board I was going for. Um, even though this is the M Power Max, I think I would have been happy with just the Z87 M Power, uh, the non Max. Uh, simply, it, it has all the features that you need. It's such a tough, durable, well built board. Um, I cannot advocate these boards enough for MSI. If you're looking for a good, stable overclocking platform, highly recommend the MSI Z87 M-Power Max. So that's the Intel board. Um, the CPU that I will be testing is the flagship 1150 Intel i7. 4770K CPU. Right now it is the fastest processor for this socket. It's very similar to the 4670K. Um, both have identical feature sets except for the 4770K has hyper threading which in turn will increase performance in some applications. Typically in gaming you're not going to see any advantages from hyper threading. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about planning a build around this platform. If you do lots of video editing, you should go for the i7. If you purely do a lot of gaming, go for the i5 4670K. So the Intel 4770K is the CPU we have. Now we're cooling that bad boy by a SwiftTech H220. I have upgraded the loop and added a 60 millimeter uh, rear radiator sorry that's 60 millimeters thick and it is compatible with a 120 millimeter fan uh, it is from XSPC now honestly I did not find a huge benefit by adding this radiator into the loop my temperatures overall may be dropped one to four Four degrees overall. It's been very difficult to test lately since my ambience have been all over the place as low as 18 centigrade and as high as 31 centigrade so I'm currently basically still testing my overall temperatures but it's doing a good job. So we have the SwiftTech H220, we have the 2 by 120 millimeter rad that was uh, 
included with the unit that's in the front and I'll I'll give you a close up on that in a little bit. Um, I'm using some Primo Chill Blue UV Reactive 3.8 ID 5.8 OD tubing in the loop. Um, for memory, I'm running Kingston Hyper X Beast modules. These are 2400 megahertz kits at 1.65 volts. I will tell you, I was unable to get 2400 megahertz at 1.65 volts as the XMP profile suggested. I contacted Kingston, they basically said extreme memory profile is overclocking. They will only support the JDEC standard of 1333. Anything above that would be considered overclocking and there's no official support for it. I was able to get 2400 megahertz at 1.785 volts. Uh, sorry. 1.71 volts I was able to get 2400 megahertz at 1.785 volts I was able to get 2666 stable for over 12 hours with my CPU clock to 4.6 gigahertz so once again 2 by 8 gigabyte Kingston HyperX Beast modules these things are awesome I highly recommend them they're sexy as hell with the black PCB Keep these things coming. Kingston, if you're watching this video, send me another two 8 gig sticks. I just love them so much. As far as the videos are, the video cards, uh, I'm running SLI setup. These are fairly old cards by today's standards. These are NVIDIA GTX 460 one gigabyte cards. I have an Asus card and a Zotac card. Uh, the Asus card has the direct CU cooling on it and the Zotac has its own aftermarket uh, cheapo cooling solution. I have them SLI together and honestly I'm very happy with the performance right now. I do want to upgrade to NVIDIA GTX 6 or 780 SLI but to be honest I don't have that kind of money so if NVIDIA is watching please send me to NVIDIA GTX 780s so I can put them on the internet and I can review them and I can overclock them and I can test NVIDIA GPU Boost 2.0 all that good stuff but for now GTX 460 SLI um, the power supply uh, is pretty awesome I got this at a really good price from a local uh, used sale online kijiji.ca uh, hua fist pump uh, I picked up this power supply, believe it or not, for $100. Uh, I thought it was a smoking good deal. I did upgrade all the cables to the Silverstone uh, sleeve cable kit. I purchased the cables from NCIX. Uh, purchasing all the cables individually, just what I needed and nothing more, cost me about an additional $60. Very happy with the cables. They're absolutely beautiful, well manufactured. Um, made this build a dream come true to be honest with you so if you're looking at this Silverstone Strider power supplies I really really recommend them so other than that in the system we'll come over here a little bit and see what's going on um, I have my optical drive down at the bottom here and I also have a my mass storage drive which is only 320 gigabytes in this particular build. I do run a home server with about six terabytes of storage and that's typically what I keep all my media on so I really don't need much on this computer. Now I'll give you guys a little shot of the SwiftTech H220 radiator that's included with the system in its glory. So this case is an Antec 900 very very old case this thing was not compliant or compatible with water cooling whatsoever I had to modify the heck out of it to water cool this case uh, I've done lots of mods to the case actually I've made a CPU cutout I've added cable management holes I've modified 
the uh, chassis a little bit to mount this 120 mil radiator. You can see kind of above it there's a bit of a rough cut. I've painted the entire chassis white as well. And you know I just kind of breathed some uh, new life back into the old into the old girl. So fairly happy with the build overall. I think it looks fairly good. So yeah, there you go. There is basically my overview of the test system that I will be using um, to follow up with a series of overclocking videos. Uh, if I didn't mention the hard drive, it's a Kingston HyperX 3K hard drive, 240 gigabytes. Uh, I'm a big fan of Kingston HyperX. If Kingston's watching, please send me some HyperX gear to review. I would love to uh, promote and advertise your product a little bit. I like it that much. As far as Intel Haswell, I've had fun with this platform. It's been very tough, very difficult, very demanding overall. Um, if you want to overclock it, you better be willing to commit some time. But uh, some of the things that I really enjoy about Haswell are the power features. I'm using Intel Extreme Tuning Utility right here and you can see that the CPU likes to jump down uh, it goes as low as 800 megahertz and the voltage drops to about 0.7 so I'll just show you quickly if I can get it to uh, to come up with the 800 megahertz here in CPU Z I don't know if you guys can see this too well. Yeah, there it goes. Might be a little hard to see, but it's fairly jumpy overall uh, from the fully integrated voltage regulator, the Fiverr. Um, that's basically what's happening right now is it's kicking around the voltage, kicking around the, the CPU frequency, using its idle states properly. And power consumption from the wall is about, just my CPU is about 60 to 70 watts at idle. It's phenomenal. It's very, very good. Um, under load, I'm drawing about 180 watts and that's just my CPU. I hope you enjoyed my system overview of the MSI Z87 M Power Max with the Intel 4770K Kingston HyperX Beast modules, Kingston HyperX SSD, NVIDIA GTX 460 SLI, Silverstone 1200 Watt Strider Gold. Uh, these are awesome parts. I, I love them all. I'm really happy with this build. And uh, I look forward to publishing some overclocking videos right away. Thanks.